Okay. Oh dear. So you know what, Marcia, just go ahead. Um, you have the questions. So just go ahead and um, I'll just be at my end just trying to resolve what I'm doing and then I'll just chip in um, with any clarifying questions that I have. How about okay. that? Okay. okay. Yeah. That so fun. let's go. So let's go to the so welcome again, everybody. <laughs> We've just had a whole bunch of technical difficulties, which is okay. Uh, Mercury's in retrograde until July the 8th, 18th. So there's going to be a lot of technical difficulties uh, and issues going on during this period. That is not uncommon. Um, our job is just to be patient and get through with that. So having said that, I'll let Marcia take it away. Um, so you have the questions. Um, what are the answers? So through oh, wow. the chat. So having said that, Question. Oh, okay, so the audio is working at my end. Yay. <laughs> and not only that, so I'm also hearing the Wait, hold on. Let, let the recording finish. Let the <laughs> I'm hearing I'm hearing the the I'm hearing our conversation on a delay. So that's the reason why I'm like yeah, anyway. because, because you're watching it on Facebook. Just switch back to Zoom and then that way you won't hear it. No, I'm on Zoom. I'm watching it on Zoom. Anyway. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> and Hello, here everyone. Again. Technical difficulties, I, I, I tell you, you know, however, we are persistent and we are getting this, right? So welcome to you all and thank you all for being here. And my name is Marcia, Marcia Chambers, speaker MC. I'm also the Vulva Goddess. And our last presentation, we had some questions that evolved from our presentation. And I trust that each and every one of you enjoyed our presentation. So here are some questions that arrived and I have them in my possession. <laughs> and I am going to answer each one of them to the best of my capabilities. <laughs> So the first one says, how much is enough? Now, because our conversation concerned sex and because our conversation concerned sex sexuality, I can only assume that you're asking how much sex is enough, right? Now, sex is pleasure. Well, good sex is pleasure. <laughs> Sex yeah, I think pleasure. you need that qualifier. Yeah, sex. that qualifier, right? Yeah, that because qualifier sometimes is. you can have some really bad sex, right? And you're like, oh, I don't want any more of that. However, pleasure, it's up to you. How much pleasure is enough for you? Because at the end of the day, I mean, who gets enough pleasure, right? Who gets an overabundance of pleasure, right? Who doesn't want to feel good? Because that's what sex does. Sex is a mood Earth. changer. Sex is a blood pressure lowerer. Sex is a, an anxiety lowerer. You know, sex, sex releases oxytocin. It releases dopamine. It releases all those neurotransmitters that make you feel good. You know, the other day, and just to give you an example, right? The other day, I was feeling really discombobulated, so misaligned and, you know, off my game. And I started to meditate. And for whatever reason, I started feeling, you know, touching, just touching and being in connection with my body. Nothing wrong with that. You touch yourself and you say, oh, this feels so good. Oh, my skin is so soft. And, you know, just get into the feeling of it. 
And hey, can I say I'm the poster child for masturbation? So <laughs> I went ahead and I pleasured myself. And the next morning on my way, I was like, whoa, I was just springing, you know, just springing. So much so I went to get my coffee. And I said to the lady when I was paying, I said, pay for the person in the back. And she said, okay. And when I got the bill, I was like, my God, it's breakfast time. What the hell are they eating? It was $25. But you know, that <laughs> that's not the point. The point is I just felt so good that, you know, it was like, everything was mellow so who doesn't want to have that feeling all the time sometimes you're you're driving on the road and you notice some people who are really really ownery you know <laughs> why they ain't get no sex or they had some bad sex they had no pleasure <laughs> so the the point is how much is enough it's up to you that is that is a uh, you know, a relative conversation. How much pleasure is enough for you? So that's my answer to that. The next question is, uh, is sex not supposed to be a thing of the mind? Well, to what I said earlier, sex is of the mind and of the body. And where I find that a lot of people nowadays, well, not a lot, quite a few people are just having the sex just to get to the goal. Oh, I just want to come, you know, they, they just want to get to the goal. They're not enjoying the journey, right? And part of the journey is to really appreciate the mind and body connection. So you're being touched. How does that touch feel? Oh, you're being kissed. How does that kiss feel? You know, just how the feeling of everything. That's the mind and the body connection. Because too many times we're from the neck up kind of sex and not with the entire body, the somatic feeling, the, the mindfulness, the being present. You know, so many of us are, we're having sex, it's being pleasurable, but we're thinking, oh, I got to pay the car payment. Oh, the mortgage is due. Oh my God. I, I don't know what time to pick up little Ricky, you know, that kind of stuff. You're, you're thinking about everything else as opposed to enjoying what's happening, enjoying the moment, being in the moment, being present. And even in just similar conversations, just a regular conversation, how many times, and you can raise your hand to this, how many times are you in a conversation with someone and that person, they're talking at you. And I say they're talking at you because they're not even looking at you in your eyes. They're looking everywhere else. They're looking behind you. They're looking around you, you know, and, and everything else. They're, they're like uh, that dog in up. I don't know if you're, anybody has ever seen that, that movie. It's a dog. It's like everything distracts him. Like he has ADD. You, you, you know, he's going this way and squirrel, squirrel, and he goes that way. Squirrel. Yeah, that squirrely brain. There's no focus. There is no presence. And with, with what's going on these days where people are dying, you know, and you're hearing this with such regularity oh this one died oh that one died and they're not dying at 80 and 90 they're dying at 35 and 25 how many times can you say well wow i remember that conversation i had with so and so we don't even remember what we did or what what we said because we're not mindful we're not present we're not being present with that conversation and that's what you know you you see you go to the restaurant and you see people with their phones. They're sitting across from each other and each of them are with their phones. Why? Because they don't have that mindfulness. They don't appreciate the present company. And, and this is what mindfulness and mindful sex is all about. Part of what Swellful Women promotes and the Vulva Goddesses promote is being more mindful. And what helps with that is when you start to meditate. When you start to meditate, meditation helps you to be mindful with your creator 
just be silent. Turn off that monkey brain where everything is like squirreling around. Just, just knock it out the box. Try it for like maybe two minutes a day. And then you can graduate to maybe five minutes a day. Just being focused. And as women, we tend to believe that, you know, oh, we can multitask and that's good. Yeah. Mm -mm. I, I, used to, I used to be, I used to be, you know, however, when you start disciplining yourself and practicing to just focus on one task at a time, one task at a time on my to-do list, I'll have like eight things to do. And I love to create a to-do list because I love to cross things off. I'll have eight things and I'll dedicate an hour, maybe two hours to each task just to get them off. That's the focus. So apply that to every area of your life, including sex. When you're having sex, that's why sometimes some people say, oh, it wasn't so great because they didn't get to climax. Well, okay, so what? You didn't get to climax. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the feeling. Enjoy how your partner feels. Enjoy even if it's just with you. Enjoy how you feel, you know? So that's my answer to that. Yes, yeah, sex is a thing of the mind, and it's also a thing of the mind-body connection. Well, if I can just add uh, a little bit to that, I think um, one of the things that's important, and I think that we're doing it right now, uh, Marcia, is that people need to be educated about sex. Um, I think uh, for many of us, what we know about sex is what we learned from our peers, what we learned from school, from what people were whispering, you know, or um, you know, looking at magazines, you know, they used to call them the dirty magazines or looking at porn or so, stuff like that. Very few of us, myself included, e ever really had someone sit down and say, this is the way it should be and, and here's when it's good and here's when it's bad. And so we have all these people growing into adulthood and uh, making babies and making families and getting along with their lives with, with some kind of idea of what sex ought to be. But unfortunately, uh, that idea of what sex ought to be is not complete. And so I think it's important that the mind component, even the spiritual component of sex is something that needs to be taught. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that honestly needs to be taught because a lot of us do not know, period. A lot of us do not know. There are a lot of women who do not know that they, that a lot of women don't even know what an orgasm is. They have, yeah. maybe they've read about it. They've heard people talk about it. They've heard uh, about it in movies and stuff like that, but they've never personally experienced an orgasm. And so when you talk about orgasm, um, it's, it's like talking about uh, 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 Mars. a foreign fruit. It's a foreign fruit. I mean, yeah. they can go on Google and Google it and see what the fruit looks like, but until you experience it, it's kind of hard to explain to someone what an orgasm is if they haven't experienced an orgasm. It's just like trying to describe to somebody what an orange tastes like when they've never had an orange in their life. Now, and again, there are other uh, cultural taboos around it. In, uh, in, uh, in some developing nations, let me put it that way, some developing nations, not all developing nations, uh, there is this notion that women should not or ought not to enjoy sex. If they do enjoy sex or show any signs of enjoying sex, then that means that they're promiscuous. And so, um, there's, so there's that conditioning where even when a woman wants to enjoy sex, she is still not present, just like you were saying, uh -huh. she's not present because she's busy monitoring herself. She's uh -huh. monitoring her responses and she's trying to make sure that the, 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 wh whoever she's having sex with is thinking about her in a, in, in a certain way. And in order to manage that image of, or, or reputation of being thought of in a certain way, she may constrain herself and not be able to yield herself fully to that experience of sex. 
And so uh, sexual dissatisfaction arises from that. Because look at it this way, Isn't, uh, what was that movie? Um, I believe it was The Color Purple, the one that Oprah Winfrey acted in and uh, uh, some other uh, very notable uh -huh. uh, actors uh -huh. and actresses as well. Remember, uh, I think uh, the main uh, lady in that, in that protagonist in, in the movie, when she described sex with her husband, she, she described it as feeling like she was a piss pot. You know, the man just came, pissed and went away. She felt mm -hmm. like a piss pot. So if, if someone is feeling like a piss pot or they're just feeling like they're a receptacle, then it is, I, I think it would be kind of challenging for them to enjoy sex. And, and even extending that to their personal self, if they see themselves as just a receptacle or, or yeah, you know, just an object in that sexual experience, even when it comes to them doing what is rightful for them by themselves, it, it will be kind of hard for them to overcome that because how am I going to go about pleasuring myself if I see myself just as an object, a sexual object? You see what I'm saying? So, so I may not even bother pleasuring myself because if, if I have this view of myself as a sexual object, then what am I pleasuring myself for? I mean, I'm just to be used, you know? So I say this, I know that sounds a little bit extreme, but that's a reality for a lot of women. It is. Uh, it is a reality. And so I believe that sex education shouldn't be reserved just for the young people in school, but there should also be that constant, unrelenting sexual education for adults as well especially women, to first of all, let them know that uh, sex is not sinful and enjoying sex is not sinful. Another right. thing I'd like to quickly tack on to this before you go on to your next question, Marcia, mm -hmm. is this. The basic premise of female circumcision, which is a bane in many parts of the world, again, is based on female sexuality. Yep. and the numbing and the dumbing down and the eradication of, of female sexuality. That is the main premise behind female circumcision. It is to control the woman, to make her not feel sexual, to eradicate the sexual part of her being. And so when you are or someone you know is in a culture that practices female circumcision, you can already know right there that the woman is tasked with controlling and maintaining a, sex, a, a certain or non-existent sexual image where the males are concerned. How can she enjoy sex? I, I mean, if, if you cut off a woman's clitoris, She's and depending, you know, there are different levels of circumcision. Yes. Um, you know, basically, you've taken her pleasure out of the equation. Uh -huh. And I'm I'm sorry to say that even in the so-called developed uh, nations in the world, the so-called Western they are doing nations, it. Circumcision, female circumcision, still goes yep. on. It still goes on within certain ethnic groups and cultural groups. I mean all one has to do is to Google that information. So it's not something that, oh, it's like some poor, dirt poor country in Asia or Africa or South America or wherever. Right. No, it's, it, it even happens here in America. It happens yes. in Canada. It happens yes. in the United Kingdom. Because again, the onus of, of maintaining sexual boundaries is being put on the woman, which is wrong. Why should a woman be responsible for controlling a man's sexual urges? That again is behind the idea of blaming women uh, for rape that it, it, it is the woman's yeah. fault, you know? Yeah. So in order to prevent that, let's circumcise her. So there's that whole bigger conversation that needs to happen, but that conversation again needs to happen within education and letting people know that, hey, this, the, it's, it's not wrong for a woman to feel sexual pleasure. It's not wrong. Over to you. Wow. 
So you just opened a whole Pandora's box because when I started doing this work and I came across a spectrum of women who just, no, nah, I don't like sex. No, no, don't, don't say that word to me. I immediately thought, okay, religious oppression, right? It wasn't until I started really developing my skill set that I learned about FGM, female genital mutilation. Right. And I was, it's, it's abhorrent. And to your point, yes, it's a matter of control. It's a matter of dumbing women down to not know that you are a powerful goddess. It's, it stems right back to the religion, right? Now, when a woman's clitoris is cut off because of rites of passage or whatever, whatever the, whatever the messaging is in that regard, yes, you're right. Now she can't see herself as, oh, I'm pretty. Well, let me tell you something. The clitoris is three feet, three feet long, right? And there's a doctor that's in San Francisco. Um, Marsha, I forgot her name. However, she repairs the clitoris, right? She pulls it back down and yeah. does whatever the surgery is. I'm just saying that, that there are possibilities you know, there are means to the end. And as you wow. said, there are different types of FGM. There are the types where they actually sew the entire genitalia up. I mean, seriously? Yeah. So there are, there are ways around it. And yes, that affects the psyche. So that's exactly where it's going to have to start with the psychological uh, repair, knowing that you are a woman, knowing that you create nations, knowing that you are a powerful goddess, knowing that you hold the cookie and the man is always chasing after the cookie. So you are the prize, right? So that psyche needs to be reversed. Not only does female genital mutilation control or is a form of control for women, so is religion. Because it, we said this in our last discussion, it stems back to where Eve is the blame for everything. You know? So th this, this psychological repair needs to be done. So this mind and body connection needs to, be, needs to be had. And yes, you're correct. Sex education needs to be taught to adults. And that's why Swell for Women does what we do. You know, we teach women or we have these conversations with women to let them know the power that they have within to let them know that yes even though you have gone through some kind of sexual trauma and i'd say 90 percent of women in the world today globally have gone through some kind of sexual trauma whether we've been raped we've been molested or whatever the uh, the the subject matters are we have gone through it and as women, it's just part of disempowering us. So we now have to reclaim our power. And it takes a while. It's not something that happens overnight. It takes a while. And, and yes, education is, is a means to that end. So I'm, I'm glad that you brought this up about female genital mutilation because not many women, especially in the Western culture, are familiar with that. Not many women know that that even exists. And in, in this culture, in the US of A, there are many nations who actually, when they have children, girl children here, they take them back to the homeland and they perform those rites. So these westernized women are still brought up with the cultural barriers, so to speak. Am I saying that correctly? Well, well, let me just jump in here. Uh, the instances um, actually that are researched, so there are actually research articles on, on, on uh, FGM in westernized countries like United Kingdom, Canada, and United States. Actually, uh, it's interesting you should say that many of the people who are even doing it don't even go back to their home countries. What they, they do, do it here? 
it's done here. And so what they do is they get a physician from their culture who supports the practice. And that physician then comes to the home to perform that mutilation, or they take the, the female infant to that physician's office or practice, and then that mutilation is um, performed. And again, I'm not saying anything that's not already published. Right. Uh, I mean, so a lot of them don't even have to go. It's performed within their communities. Then some of them have um, women, like older women who are from their communities yes. who perform this. Yes. And so what happens, they either take their child to that woman's house or the woman comes to their house. They make it, uh, they have a party and they call it, you know, this great party. And, and, you know, so there's all this indoctrination that goes on and it's looked at as a huge party. And even in a place like Houston, um, I've spoken with a nurse. Uh, this was many, 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 many years ago who uh, claimed that um, uh, she did it to her own daughters. And this is a woman who's an RN. And she was like, oh, God forbid that my, my daughters are going to be running around wild and promiscuous like American uh, 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 women or American, uh, black American women, because again, there's that cultural percep perception where um, they were trying to separate themselves uh, from uh, their perceptions or stereotypes of whoever it is that they're finding here in America. And so you get the situation where uh, someone from a different culture points to the American culture and says, you see how uh, libidinous they are. You see how promiscuous they are. I don't want my children to be like that. And then they use that, what they see um, in, in the media, on broadcast media, social media, you know, people twerking, people half naked, uh, you know, the celebrities who are naked and twerking or wearing see-through clothing or that kind of thing. They use that as the basis for doing what they do culturally. And, mm -hmm. you know, as you, you and I know, you know, we have our heritage, you know, outside of America. And when I'm with my African, uh, you know, crew, I know the kind of things that get said. And when I'm with my Caribbean crew, I know the kind of things that get said. And those groups are pointing and saying, well, there, we don't want to be like Americans because of this thing or the other. And a lot of it revolves around sex. A lot of it revolves around what is being seen in, on social media and even on, t on television. You know, you look at a, a, a music video. Why is it that the, the males more often than not are fully dressed, but the women have to be naked? And then, of course, advertisers or marketers will tell you that sex sells. So when people from other cultures see this, even though they're living in America and, and participating in the American dream, they don't want that part of the American dream. They don't want that part of the American culture uh, as, as part of their American dream. And so they will enforce their culture on their children and their grandchildren. And unfortunately, uh, FGM or female genital mutilation just happens to be one of those things that people um, look at and they believe that if they do this to their children, then it will keep them from being too Americanized or too Westernized. So I just had to throw that in there. People are doing it here. People are doing a whole bunch of things in their privacy of their homes. So, wow. Um, it, it really, it re no, it really. You had, you, really had to think, me, you had to think about that, right? You had to think yeah, about. Yeah, you know, it really make it really makes you pause that behind closed doors there are so many atrocities that are that are going on. But there was a question that asked about sexuality, exploring the sexuality. And I know that Western culture, yeah, 
American girls or, you know, the Western women, they're so promiscuous. Well, why does it have to be promiscuous? Why is it that the woman is ex isn't exploring what makes her feel good? Why isn't it that she's exploring her sexuality? Why isn't it that uh, she's tapping into, well, oh, I like how this gender, how males, how men make me feel or how this guy makes me feel as opposed to that guy, right? Why does it, why is it there's the shame and the guilt that's associated with sex? That's, that's part of the religion that kind of lashes us. Sex is bad, sex is a sin. And it, 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 it permeates globally, right? Not just well, with FGM, but that control to let you know that, oh, women, you're not supposed to feel sexy. You're not supposed to want sex. You're not supposed to enjoy sex, to your point before, right? We're not supposed to because we're just a vessel for reproduction. That's all we're here to do, a piss pot so that we could produce another image of him. Well, everybody's responsible for their own orgasm. That's number one. If he didn't come, that's his problem. If you didn't come, that's your problem. Why didn't you come? That's number one. Number two, sex is pleasurable. And to the FGM point, when they're cutting off our clitorises, now our clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings, 8,000 more than the fingers, more than the elbows, more than the butt, 8,000. So why were we created this way? Because I, I call it the fun button. It's a fun button. You know, when you play with it, it's fun. It makes you feel good and feel alive. Why not? Men have their own fun button because their penis is just the extension of our clitoris. And when you chop that off, as they do in female genital mutilation, they're trying to not make us have pleasure. They're trying to remind us that you are a woman, you're just a receptacle for reproduction, and that's it. That's your, that's your use. In some cultures, the men are educated and the women aren't. Am I correct? In some, in some cultures, they would send the little boy to school and they would keep the little girl home to go clean the house, cook the food and all that, and not let her know that she has a brain as well. So all this control, it, 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 it's just society's way of disempowering us and creating the patriarchy, so to speak. And, and it's not just in America, it's everywhere. And it starts out with sex. Why does the woman wear less clothing and is the attractive force? Because we have the cookie. We are the prize. They know that. It's we who don't know that. It's we who are not exercising that empowerment. It's we who are not reminding ourselves how powerful we are. So, you know, it, it it's, comes right full circle back to us. Yeah, it starts with education. It starts with the constant reminders. However, we are powerful. We are powerful. And exploring your sexuality is not promiscuity. I mean, unless you're doing it with, um, you know, irresponsibility. But why is it looked at with shame and with guilt? When men do it, it's not looked at with shame and with guilt. It's not saying that he's a whore or he's a slut. It's saying that, oh, he's a stud. Well, well, yeah. Well, let me, let me uh, interject here, if I may, Marcia. Uh, there's this book. It's a classic book, uh, Women Who Run With the Wolves by uh, Dr. Clarissa uh, Pinkola Estes or Estes Pinkola, Pinkola Estes, I think it is. And, um, you know, she talks about the, you know, the, the, the wolf as being the, an archetype uh, for the wild woman. And uh, in talking about wild women, there, there is a part in her book where she talks about when we 
uh, restrict women because we point to those that are considered promiscuous and we say, well, look at the ones who are promiscuous. Therefore, we, we don't want you to be like the ones who are promiscuous. Therefore, we're going to cage you. That in itself becomes a problem because when the one who was caged becomes uncaged, then they're more likely to be like the promiscuous one because they suddenly found their freedom. And not only did they suddenly find their freedom, they weren't told what to do with that freedom. That's where that education comes in again. Uh -huh. So if it's so just, and, and I think she gave uh, uh, several analogies and one is like a bird. You have a bird that is caged for so long and then you open the, the gate of the cage and then the bird comes out and then you see the bird flapping around them and crashing into everything. And you're like, the door is open. All you have to do is fly out. But the bird is busy flying around and smashing itself all over the place. Now, the bird will do that because it's been caged for so long. It was not trained to simply fly out the door of the cage and fly out the open door. It didn't know to do that. It really did not know to do that. So what it ends up doing is you open the cage and once it figures that the, the cage is open, uh, the, the door of the cage is open, it flies around because it's so excited and it's, you know, try, doing a whole bunch of trial and errors. And, and that, um, I think uh, she was trying to say in that book, or at least the way I understood it, that that happens with women. And so we cage the woman, we indoctrinate her with false education, false information. We, we do all that. And then suddenly we're like, okay, you want your freedom, have your freedom. Well, you're, you, you put her out there, but she doesn't know what to do with the freedom because she hasn't been educated about that. She hasn't been told, taught how to comport herself. Uh -huh. uh, she hasn't been shown how to comport herself in different kinds of company. Like the way I comport myself with you is going to be quite different from the way I'll comport myself with my uncle I spoke with this morning. I think he's 75 or 76 <laughs> or 70 something years old. The way I comport myself with him is definitely not the way I'll comport myself with you. You see, but I'm able to do that because I have the opportunity to to learn how to reg self regulate with different types of people. But then, uh -huh. when you have a woman who was caged for so long, and then you throw her out there and say, "Well, sink or swim," a lot of times they sink, they drown, or they at least take in a lot of water before they learn how to swim, and then and then people turn around and point at her and say, see, that's what we said. Women are naturally promiscuous and they need to be controlled. So, so, so that becomes a cultural problem and it becomes a, a, a spiritual problem because remember again, religion and culture, even though they're intertwined, they're uh -huh. different. And there's some things from religion that we've put into our culture and accept them as cultural. And there's some things in our culture we've put into religion and we've called it, uh, uh, you know, religious. Uh -huh. When you look at indigenous religions, and, I, and, and permit me to just address this before you continue. Uh -huh. I know you've kind of referenced, you know, Eve. And in our last session, we talked about Lilith. But... The one thing I want to mention is that that is an Abrahamic religion that uh -huh. looked at women a certain way. When you look at indigenous religions, you will find that women tend to have more exalted positions than in the Abrahamic faiths. Uh -huh. So when you look at um, uh, Judaism, you look at Christianity, you look at Islam, women tend to have a more subservient role even though women were the people who supported the founders and the establishers of those religions, even though women were the mainstay of the founders of those three Abrahamic religions. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation we can go into right there about the role oh, that played 
to establish those religions. But ultimately, women became disempowered through those three religions. Uh, and, but when you look at a, a number of indigenous religions, you find that that's not the case. You know, women are honored. Women have their place. Women have their power. Women are, are, are respected and reverenced in these indigenous religions. So you see how the religion turns around to influence the culture and then changes the culture where everybody turns around and says, well, it's part of our culture because they absorb this religion. And I can say that for Christianity and Islam that I'm quite familiar uh -huh. with. I mean, they're, they're, Christianity and Islam have changed so many cultures that people are unable to differentiate between uh, what is uh, their cultural heritage and what is their religious influence. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So a couple of things. So I thank you for that. A couple of things back on religion. And Tia said, religion is a form of psychological circumcision. I wholeheartedly agree. And the more you study about these religions, the more you realize that they're all the same. Oh, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, Christianity, they're all so intertwined and they're all with oppressing the woman and her power, right? So I just wanted to put that there. I just wanted to throw that out there, <laughs> okay? You spoke also about the caged woman. So there's a dichotomy to that because there's this conditioning to which this is where the control comes in. Now there's a experiment where you have this, uh, I think it was a, I think it was a frog. A frog was- In the boiling no, water. In the boiling water, right. The frog was in the boiling water and the frog was left there and he thought that, okay, this water, no, it wasn't the frog in the water, it's the other one. It was a, um, a fly, a fly in oh. a bottle. So the fly is in the bottle and the bottle is closed, right? And the okay. fly flies about the bottle and feels that, oh, this is as high as I can go. Oh, and it's been conditioned to think that this is his space, his world or its world. I don't know if it's a female or a male, right? Uh, who knows? It could be a female fly. <laughs> <laughs> right. that this is the extent of its domain where it can go and then after a while i forget how much lo how long of a time passed they opened the bottle but the fly did not fly out because it was conditioned to think that oh this is i, I can't go out there no i'm not going to go out there i don't know what's out there so it's the same thing with women so some women in some cultures, in some religions, they have been conditioned to believe that sex is bad, sex is no good, you have no power, you're just for reproduction, you know, and, and they keep them in this little receptacle. So you open the door, you educate, you share the news, and they feel, no, I don't want, to, I don't want any parts of that, you know? So it's that dichotomy that we're also faced with that those who are so conditioned, do they, are they open to remove some of that conditioning, to, to experience and explore? And in exploring, is it now promiscuity? Is it now that she's a slut, she's a whore? Why is it that she's not exploring? It's like a four-year-old child exploring their body and they're masturbating. They're exploring. They're, they're looking and seeing what feels good is that bad no it's natural and it's healthy we have removed ourselves so much from nature and from the earth from our godliness that even though religions talk about um be with god are they really being with god or are they being with themselves to you know get that that million dollar jet oh put some money in my coffer because I want to buy that new G7, you know, I want to fly all over the world. Meanwhile, their congregation is taking the bus to come and listen to them. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's that, that the, the, the that's the atrocity <laughs> that, that is abound. And, and back to, I think um, we spoke earlier about porn, right? And why is it that 
some, and I'll get to the next question. Why is it that, because one of the questions was about sexuality, so that's why I kind of intertwined that. Why is it that when they watch porn, that the man has his clothes on and uh, listen, porn sex is not sex. Porn sex is just uh, entertainment. Most of those porn stars, and I've met some of them, most of them, you know, they're either drugged up or they're numbed. So their mind body connection is not there. Ah, ah, ah. Anybody can stand there and say that. Ah, ah, feels good. Ah, ah. Yeah, really? The mind body connection is not there. So it's entertainment because sometimes you have people who really want to know well, how do you have sex? What is sex? So maybe it gives them an introduction. Maybe it gives them a bad introduction because it's not giving them the full picture of what sex is all about, you know? So I just wanted to to bring that to, to the forefront as well. Right. right. And the music videos, you know, with the, the naked girls and, and the, uh, the artist singing his song, you know, amongst all the uh, booty clapping and... Entertainment. And yeah, it's entertainment. Entertainment. But, but the thing is that we watch it over and over again. Our children watch it over and over again. Our grandchildren watch that over and over again. And we no longer see it as entertainment. We see that as truth. Mm -hmm. We start seeing that as truth. And we start emulating it. And that's why you will go to a platform like Instagram. And there are so hundreds of thousands of videos of 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 women twerking with you know and 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 they're not just twerking as a dance but they're twerking uh, uh seductively sexually uh, uh positioning themselves in a certain way to do the twerk um i remember a couple of years ago there was a comedian nigerian comedian who posted on his timeline a picture of a of a I think she she had to be 18 months old if at that twerking in her diapers and the mother what you could hear wait a minute mother, hold on how how do you see the twerking when she has diapers on isn't the twerking the <laughs> well I tell you what I saw so there's this child and 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 I watched it was a short clip and the comedian had posted this thing and he said, uh, what do you think about this? Isn't this funny? And people were writing comments, you know, under that. And this was a child, she was still in her diapers. All she had on was just her diaper. She didn't have a dress on or a top on. Um, she just, she was barefooted in her diapers. And it, 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 it was uh, an American uh, uh, production because, you know, you could hear from the accent of the mother in the background and the mother was like isn't that so funny twerk baby twerk and so this child uh raised her hands and was twerking and then actually put her hands down on the floor like a stripper and was twerking and the mother you could still hear the mother holding the the the, the, the camera behind and, and, and she her mother is laughing and saying oh my god look at my baby is twerking my baby's twerking and 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 so the child adopts a stripper pose and is like twerking you know in the diaper and people are writing oh it's funny it's funny it's funny then i wrote a comment and i said this is disgraceful why are our daughters being sexualized like this this child is too young for this and then uh a 20 something year old nigerian woman responded and attacked me in, in that attacked comment you? she attacked me and said it's in your own mind that she's being sexualized if you didn't have a dirty mind you wouldn't see that i didn't respond to that i just didn't respond to that this this was like about what three years ago or four years ago i didn't respond to that i really didn't respond to that because if 
the, you know, and how did I know it was a young 20 something year old woman? I went and looked at her profile and I saw, you know, what she posted there. So that's how I kind of knew who it was. Um, it wasn't worth it to me to start engaging on an online Instagram uh -huh. uh, situation or start flaming and going back and forth. Um, she will learn. That's the way I put it. <laughs> In my mind, she will learn mm -hmm. and she will eat her own words with regret. You know, she will eat her own words with regret. But why, again, am I saying this is that you see how early that indoctrination is starting. You yeah. have a mother holding that phone, uh, a videoing, a videotaping her daughter who was about 18 months old in diapers who was twerking like a stripper. And the mother was like, yeah, that's my baby. Yeah, that's my baby. So it's stuff like that that some people see and they point at and they, they point at a race, uh -huh. they point at a gender and they say, see what women do or see what black women do or see what black women teach their daughters to do. You see what I'm saying? And so the proper education didn't even happen with the mother. No, no. Because, no, because it my, point, my point again, you know, to the comedian is that you ought not to post this. Don't be associated with this kind of nonsense. Because all it's going to take is for someone to go through that guy's timeline, if he hasn't deleted it by now, but all, all it takes is for somebody trying to dig up dirt to go through this guy's timeline and pull up this video and say, well, guess what? He must be a pedophile because, a, a pedophile, right, because he likes this kind of stuff. And for him even to post it in the first place is problematic. If that were his own daughter, would he would post he? that? You see what I'm saying? So, so he didn't. He, so to, to so, not to cut you off, but he didn't see. He didn't see the harm. He thought it was, it was funny. funny. He you thought know? it was funny. Yeah. But I will tell you this: he thought it was funny as long as it wasn't his. As long as it wasn't his own. You right. see that? That's where I come right. with the cultural aspect, because. If that were his own daughter, his own niece, his grand, I mean, this, this is a young man. I mean, he just graduated from university. Uh, was it last year or the year before? And if it were, his, I am telling you categorically, you know, that if that were his own daughter, his own child, he would never, he would actually go and get into a fight with his wife or the mother of that child. I can tell you that. If I put on my African, my Nigerian blood on, I will tell you that there will be a fight going down in that household. But you see, it was okay for him to yeah. post because it was a black American thing. It was what they do. Oh, look at how funny it is. So, so you know, that's the other thing that we, I said we're responsible for our own orgasms. And I truly mean that. We're also responsible as a people to be mindful of the control that is so blatant and it's so widespread. Now the control is in Hollywood as well. Hollywood wants to put this perception is for entertainment purposes, right? Hollywood wants to present this perception of who we should think we are, right? They want to tell us, who we should think we are. We are promiscuous. We wear the big chains. We're dumb, you know, dumb us down, women and men. So if they constantly put this out, then it's like if you constantly repeat a lie, you start believing it's true, right? And when you don't know yourself, then you fall for anything. You fall for the okie doke. So it's up to educators, healers, teachers to remind the next person, because all it does is start with one, remind the next person. No, that's, that's not who you are. Know yourself, know thyself, 
get back in touch with your spiritual powers, right? Because you're powerful. You're a powerful being here. So don't fall for what they tell you that you are. They're writing a story and they're saying, this is your story. No, that's not your story. No, you create your own reality. And the more, sometimes when you look at something from a different perspective, your perception about it changes. So don't look at yourself like, oh, I'm a victim. No, you're a victor. And because they know you're a victor, they're trying to write the script that you're a victim. And if you constantly believe you're a victim, then you won't come out of that bottle like that fly. They tell you, this is, this is your reality. You know, no, you create your own reality. And that's the spiritual aspect of it. You don't, you don't let them control you and tell you who and where and how. No, and that's exactly what's going on now. Wear this mask. Don't let me get, don't, don't get me into that. However, <laughs> however, you know, it just starts with us getting back in tune with nature us getting back in tune with our mindfulness, us getting back in tune with our the spiritual aspect of us. We are spirits in this human container. We rented this container for a time. Some of us for 90 years, some of us for 25 years, whatever. However, for the time being, take care of this container and remember where you came from. Right. Well, uh, we've been on for an hour. I think yes. uh, we've, we've had uh, a lot of fun. So um, I will, um, I don't have any uh, questions from uh, the Facebook people. And again, for those who are on Facebook who are waiting, um, I apologize for the technical snafu. It took us about 38 minutes to resolve that. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we will not try not to repeat that again and i say try because you can only do your best um you know to get this thing working so i want to thank uh, my guest today marcia the volva whisperer uh thank you so much for the insights we need to do this again yes we um, do. i think i think this is important i think uh the information even though we we may say some things humorously but I think this is very, very vital information. Um, like we had talked about earlier, many of us don't know this. We yeah. think we do, but actually we don't. And many of us don't know this. And we just go through life thinking that we know this, but we don't. We have no idea. And, and when we sit down to just have a conversation about what we know about sexuality, and spirituality and womanhood, we find out that a lot of it is regurgitated information. A lot of us cannot even speak um, from, from uh, personal experience. A lot of us cannot speak from personal experience. A lot of us cannot speak from personal knowledge is what we've heard someone else say or what we've uh, watched someone else do. So thank you very much uh, for um, a great session. And um, as usual, I'd like to end the session with uh, a simple invocation. You know, I'm the spirituality person yes. here. <laughs> so I always like to end it with a beautiful invocation. But well, before so you end it with the invocation, I just want to say thank you. Oh. Thank you oh. for the invite. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to all the listeners, the watchers, yeah. the yeah. people who will listen in to the recorded version. You know, exactly. so thank you all for opening up your heart chakra to exactly. hear this message and receive this message because this is important. It's important. Yes. Sex is important and sex is not dirty. And hey, vulva goddess, vulva whisperer, <laughs> thank you thank you and, and, and it looks like you got the memo because i was looking you see you've got your stripes on i've got my stripes. yes yes you i know? just noticed that too yeah, I, yeah, like, oh no, I noticed that earlier but you know i was you know still working with the technical aspect of the whole thing and i'm like wait a minute it looks like you got the memo we're doing <laughs> sports today so different different folks and different 
strike, what was it, different strokes? Different, different strokes, strokes different for strikes. different folks. Right, different folks and different stripes for different whatever, white, white, so, okay. As you can tell, my, my, my rhyming is not going well right now. Okay, so are we ready? Okay, so we thank the creator of all universes and of all souls for, for this moment of sharing. We thank our guardian spirits, our guardian angels for being with us and guiding us to this divine moment to share this information amongst ourselves. And we pray that our ancestors continue to uh, love us uh, and, and guide us upon the path that they have opened up for us to follow. Ashe. All right, girl, so that's it. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's a fr you know what it feels like a Saturday. So really? <laughs> yeah, it feel it feels like a Saturday to me. So I was like, yeah, it's Saturday. Um, I can go uh, shopping, and then I, <laughs> and, and then I looked up on my screen and, and it's saying Friday, Friday. July tenth, and I'm like, okay, it's a Friday. Okay, get back to work. Get doing it. <laughs> So, yeah, so thank you so much uh, for coming on, Marcia. And when are we going to do this again? So we can let our listeners know ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, you know, so my, uh, my school starts up again on Monday. Uh -huh. so, um, so let me talk with my crew at school, uh, find out what my schedule is. And, yeah, and then we can um, let people know when the next session is going to be. I was hoping to speak with my uh, chair um, today. I guess it's not going to happen. I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of her over the weekend or Monday, at least know what my schedule is going to be like, and then we'll take it from there. Will that okay. work for you? All right. Mwah. Thank you, oh. darling. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Have a fabulous day and make it orgasmic. <laughs> Uh, yes, have an <laughs> orgasmic one. <laughs> That's right.